it's been so long since I, since I the last time I actually sat down and filmed a video like this. It's been forever. I didn't even film a video with this real camera. But I am here today to do a Q&A video. We haven't done these in a while and since we are upping our production during this isolation time, I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to sit down and answer some of your questions. And we've been getting a lot of questions, so this is going to be a lot of fun. I just wanted to say thank you for all the support in our latest videos and your concern. We are scheduled to go back to Canada in a few days. So in the meantime, we're packing up, getting everything ready. We have so much things, so everything takes its time, you know, but we have a flight to go home and thank you all for the concern. So I asked on both uh, YouTube and Instagram for some questions. So I'm going to be going through first the YouTube questions and then the Instagram. We're going to try to do everything together in a video and hopefully it's not too long, but you know, it doesn't matter if it's too long, right? We're just here to discuss. Okay, Madeline Miller asks, who writes their comments in the video? They are so great. So I'm guessing you're referring to the speech bubbles. I'm the one that does all the speech bubbles and the editing. So it's all me, but I feel like it's truly what they think. <laughs> Madeline also asks, would you get a boy cab? Um, the answer is no, and that's nothing personal against like male cavaliers in general. Everybody, I feel like, have, has a pref In general, I feel like people have a preference for male or female. But personally, um, I don't like a penis on a dog because I, I don't like to having to touch a penis personally. I don't like the idea of marking around the house, especially when they come into sexual maturity. So that's why no males for us. Amanda asked, do the girls see a cardiologist even if they are murmur free? Do they have a checkup once a year or every six months? So no, they don't see a cardiologist. They do have a checkup every year. So we go uh, get a checkup pretty frequently. And we just saw Dr. Dulake in LA and she said their hearts are fantastic. As puppies, did they eventually give you any sign they needed to go outside? Um, so how we did potty training is crate training. So we always confine them to a little space, not for uh, any disciplinary measures. It's just to get them used to holding their pee in. And then eventually you just start, I, I just started distancing the frequency at which I would bring them outside. They never, or I don't remember if they showed any sign. Oh yes, they did actually. They would go to the balcony door because at some point I had a potty, a grass potty outside. And so they would associate the door with going to potty. So yes, they would stand beside the door when they start associating potty with um, the door. And then eventually I just start imposing a schedule on them. So right now they go potty three times a day. So they just get accustomed to that schedule if that makes sense. So Amanda says, my four month old only does potty outside because I know how often she needs to go. Hoping eventually she will go to the door and give me a sign. I think that eventually she will start giving you signs or she will just get used to a regular schedule. In addition to the food that you feed the girls, do you add any heart supplements? I know you feed raw, but do you have any recommendations on fresh, on cooked fresh brands? Aside from the raw that they eat, they do have fish oil added. The omega-3 fatty acids are very healthy for them, so uh, that's what I add daily to their food. We use the one from Farah Pet Organics, but a lot of companies make them. And Farah Pet Organics, which is the company of Dr. Dulake, is also coming up with heart supplements this year. Oh, this is a funny question. Is the Cavalier loyal? So I'm gonna say yes and no, just because yes, because they are like, they're a lap dog, so they're always gonna be around, but they're also not loyal in the sense that they love everybody. Like, I joke about this. Truly, I know they love me more than they're gonna like the neighbor, but they do love anybody new that's gonna come there in their way, and they're really bad guard dogs. <laughs> How did you decide the right time to go from one to two calves? I just, after I got Herky, I was just obsessed with the breed and being on Instagram and everything, I just saw so many people adding another Cavalier to their family and I got so jealous each time. I was like, I need another one too. I deserve another Cavalier. So after Andy and I got married, or that year rather, the year that we got married, I decided that my wedding present to myself was gonna be a Cavalier. So. I put myself on the waitlist for a Cavalier and literally two weeks after we got married, she came home to us. So it was perfect timing. So sorry about all the noise. There's our neighbor making music and there's the dryer on as well. Sorry about that. Uh, Tro Mama or Trop Mama, can you give us an update on their luxating patellas? Are they still asymptomatic? 
So update on that, yes, they are still asymptomatic. We will still just be on status quo right now. We just keep going as if they didn't have this issue. I give them a joint and chew supplements on the daily, again from Fairprint Organics. And no, we are not sponsored by them. I just really trust the brand. So that's why I keep mentioning it. And truthfully, it's the supplements we use. So I'm gonna keep um, giving them the supplements. Uh, we go do yearly checkups at the vet. So that's how I'm gonna monitor the progression, if any, of their life-setting patellas. Do you think you'll be coming to Europe anytime soon? if COVID-19 is sorted. Honestly, guys, this whole COVID-19 situation is freaking me out. Like, I'm still baffled at how quickly everything is unraveling and I'm very confused about it all. Our plan since 2019 was to come to Europe, specifically to London in September, in the fall of 2020. So if things get sorted out, we will possibly go to Europe. But honestly, not to be like a Debbie Downer or anything, but I don't think this COVID-19 situation will be resolved in the next few months. Um, Jordan Neville says, I'm considering getting a Cavalier puppy and I'm wondering what kind of harness do you think is best to use? Also, what are the sort of the basics should I have on hand before the puppy arrives? Well, Jordan, for puppies, I love uh, any padded harness on the chest just because they're still growing and they're so fragile. So Pupia has some nice harnesses. Anything that has sort of a padding, I kind of like for puppies. And then once they're grown up, you can get, you can start getting them more permanent items like the beautiful leather harnesses that we have from Trey Ponty on our website. We love those. And for the basics that you should have on hand, we have a video that we just did recently on all the puppy essentials that I'm going to be linking here. I filmed that uh, Pet Wants OC South with Shannon and then I just go basically over everything that I think is essential before you get a puppy. Oh yeah, Madeline also suggests that we should do a Q&A video for her kid, Milton, and they will answer with the speech bubbles. And I completely agree with this. So if you want a video like this, thumbs up this video and put it in the comments that you want a Q&A specifically for her kid, Milton to answer. Charlie the Cavalier asks, how do you teach Herc and Milton to stay still on camera? Um, my Cavalier always shakes or something. Love your channel, very helpful. Thank you, Charlie. So literally my best tip for your dogs to be posing for photos or videos is repetition. The more you do something, the more they're gonna get used to it. So just keep doing it. Literally Herc and Milton take photos every day. If not every day, maybe like five times a week. So they're so used to it. They will hear my camera click and they will run to pose. It's so automatic for them at this point that they're just used to it. So the more you do it, the more they're going to get used to it. But not to be alarming or anything, but when if your cavalier is shaking or something, maybe they're afraid. So really try to teach your dog to associate photos with something positive such as treats. So always praise your puppy. You can pet, the, pet him. Give him treats and let him know everything is going to be okay because if he associates photos with fear, he will not get used to it. How long does it take to potty train and house train the dogs? Can a school student who is away for 10 hours a day manage a Cavalier in terms of teaching and training? Honestly, I have said this before, but I think Cavaliers are dogs that are very dependent and very emotionally attached to their owner. So 10 hours, being away 10 hours a day is not ideal. I would not suggest getting a dog, any kind of dog, if you're gonna be away for that amount of time. That being said, I know that the majority of people are away from home for eight, 10 hours, 12 hours a day. And a lot of people own dogs in those circumstances. So although I don't think that is ideal, some people still do it. But if you're gonna be away for that long in a day, I don't suggest you get a Cavalier just because it pretty much negates all the training you're gonna do. Let's say you get a Cavalier and you have the whole weekend with them to start potty training and training. And then on Monday, you have to go to work. Then almost all the potty training and the training that you've done will get negated because you're just not gonna be there. And you're not gonna be there for um, comfort and enforcement and everything. So it's not ideal. Uh, what I would suggest maybe is taking some time off from, uh, from work or from school when you're gonna get a puppy just so that you're home to be able to start the training properly. Emojis Emojis asks, what has been your favorite adventure that you have been on with Hurricane Milton so far?
Honestly, I can't pinpoint one thing, and I know this is going to sound super cheesy, but basically just being able to spend my life with them and be with them every day, all day, every day is such a thrill. It's such a blessing, and I'm so happy I get to do what I do with them. Um, Milo asks, your dogs are beautiful. You, you are jealous of them. Huh? How many times do you need to vaccinate Cavalier? Well, I'm not jealous of her kid Milton. I love them with all my heart. You need to vaccinate them according to your vet's protocol. We don't do a lot of vaccines. We only do rabies and base, which is D DMPP or DPP something. But uh, we just follow whatever the vet says, but we don't do all the extra vaccinations. Emily Gatstitch asks, are there any type of people you don't recommend having Cavalier? So as I mentioned before, if, if you're going to be gone a lot of the time, a lot of the day, I don't recommend having a Cavalier just because they are so emotionally dependent. Um, how often do you go to the groomer? For her kid Milton, their hair doesn't really grow much, so I don't take them to the groomer. I took them maybe once in their life or twice, but then now I, I just do all their grooming at home myself, and I do have some videos that I'll be linking here for you. And looking for Cavalier, is it better to take two dogs because if you're not home alone and work full time? Yes, having two litter mates, two puppies from the same litter, I've seen that being done. It does help them with the amount of time they're going to spend alone for sure. So that's something that you can consider. Absolutely. What is the most enjoyable part of having a dog? Honestly, every part of it is very enjoyable except the vet bills. Frederica asks how to clean the dog's ears because my Cavalier has frequent ear inflammation. Very good question. Cavaliers have floppy ears, so it does get very humid and nasty and smelly in there. So I would recommend frequent, meaning two times a week, ear cleaning. And we have a video on that. Check out the link in the description and up here, the annotation. Uh, I have a full video on how to clean your dog's ears. Wanda asks, what else do you add to their meals along with their raw food? When you take Hurricane Milton out for walks, do they want to stop and play with everyone that passes by? Sky is so very friendly and wants to stop and play with everyone to the point she won't do her business. So I have to walk her late at night when it's quiet outside. Hi, Sky and Wanda. Hurricane Milton, say hi. So I like to add some supplements. I do have probiotics and fish oil that go into their food every day. They also take the joint supplements. And I do like to add here and there some vegetables, some fruits like blueberries, carrots, some greens. I like to vary it up a bit, but um, I always like to add some things to the raw food. If you follow us on Instagram, I do show that a lot on my posts and on the stories if you're interested. And when I walk Herky and Milton, Milton is much more social than Herky. Herky never wants to say hi to anyone and she's afraid, but Milton kind of wants to sniff people. But I try to avoid it because you never know how other people's dogs are going to react and we've had some snappy dogs so I try to avoid them saying hello to dogs that I don't know. Okay, um, I've had this question a lot, like what color Cavalier is my favorite, what other color would I get and I love, although I love all Cavalier colors, truly my favorite is Blenheim, of course and not to discriminate against the other colors they're all beautiful honestly but my personal preference after the blenheim would be the ruby okay sophie asks i've been looking for a dog breed for some time the cavalier seems like a good choice there's one problem i'm a student and i have to go outside the house six hours a day five days a week do you think that with proper training a cavalier could take that or should i look for an other breeds so this again goes back to the other questions that that i've already answered um, six hours is okay. It's way better than be being gone 10 hours a day. So six hours, I would say, is okay for a Cavalier. Wakako Tsujita says, is Herky and Milton's personality similar or do they get, and do they get jealous when the other one gets attention? So Herky and Milton's personalities could not be more different. I think we have two videos specifically on Herky versus Milton in terms of habits and personalities and those are a lot of fun. Those were so much fun to film So I'll be referring you to those videos if you want to watch it and yes, absolutely When one gets some attention the other one always wants attention as well and they're both like that I have a four-month-old Cavalier. When do they start getting their features like the feathering on the tail and of course fur? So the feathering will depend on a lot of dogs. Some dogs start getting their featherings at about six months old and others it's well after one year old. Milton got her feathering so late, I feel like she got them within the last year and she's about to turn four years old. So it's pretty late for some dogs and for some other dogs it's pretty early on. I noticed 
correct me if I'm wrong, I could be wrong, but I did personally notice that males tend to grow fur a bit faster than females. I don't know if that's just an observation. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if it's scientifically backed up, but that's what I noticed. And also I did notice that when you spay or neuter them, the fur comes out way faster after. I have a cavalier. I love him, but he chose me as his person, but growls at everyone else. Is this common in cavaliers? Um, I would say no, that's not very common in cavaliers. Cavaliers are known to be very gentle, very submissive, very nice. So if they growl, it could be like a territorial thing, a jealousy thing, but not to be alarming you or anything, but it could also be a sign of like they're in pain. And so they're resource guarding and their re resource is you. So just make sure that you go to the vet frequently just to make sure that there's nothing wrong with your cavalier because I've heard of stories, especially recently, that uh, dogs that are in severe pain from syringomyelia they tend to get very aggressive, so be careful with that. Eric and Milton, you have to wake up. Wake up. They haven't seen you all video. Wake up. You're so lazy. Okay, let's go on to the questions from Instagram now. Rosie Weller asks, how do you discipline the girls when they misbehave? Has their behavior ever been bad? Honestly, I haven't... I don't think we ever disciplined them recently. Uh, yeah, actually we have. <laughs> um, they have this really bad habit of sometimes when we check into a new rental or a hotel, they'll just take a sniff on the bed and around the hotel and then they'll just pee. Like this is so embarrassing honestly and they tend to do this when I'm guessing. It smells like other dogs, it smells that they don't recognize and they'll just squat and pee right on the bed and oh my gosh, the last time they did that, uh, we were in New York and they did that in the rental right when we checked in and so we were so tired it's been it had been such a long day and we basically had to wash the entire bedding set before even going to bed and it's so long to clean all that but yeah that's that's why we had to discipline them and basically we just tell them no we tell them no 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 but honestly they're adults now and i don't feel like disciplining them really works but they haven't had accidents like that since so Taylor Webb asks, any tips on how to brush their teeth? I struggle to brush my cavalier's teeth since she won't be still. Um, I do have a video on how to brush your dog's teeth. I'll be linking it up here for you to watch. But basically, this is another thing of repetition makes perfect. And the more you do something, the more they'll get used to it. So try to do it as much as possible. If you struggle with a brush, maybe try the little toothbrushes that you can put on your finger and then put your finger and physically go into their mouth to clean. <laughs> Tilly is so funny. She has a lot of questions and she asks, currently, what's Andy's coyote kill count since the last update? <laughs> zero! <laughs> luckily, zero Tilly. Luckily, luckily. But honestly, guys, this is so freaky. Just to give you an update on the coyote, okay? When Andy takes out the trash on Thursday night, which was last night, he heard some rumbling in the bushes. He's like, there's something in the back, for sure. And then in the morning, there's a lot of times that I go outside in the front and then there's poop. Like, there's fresh poop. And I know it's not Hurricane Milton because they don't poop at night and we have them on a leash so we know exactly when they poop. And the neighbor's dog is gone. So there's a coyote that comes into our house and just poops in the, in the front yard all the time. So annoying. Tilly also asks, how do you deal with severe mud in the garden? I would say boots and pants. Uh, we do have pants on our website on Kavology.com and those are essential for muddy, muddy and wet weather because they're waterproof pants and they basically cover all the undercarriage of your dog. Um, the logo for Kavology, which I have as a tattoo right here, is a silhouette of a cavalier. It's specifically a silhouette of Herky because she's my number one my OG muse of the brand and it's from a local artist in Montreal. I had a very specific idea in mind. I wanted a monoline design and she specialized at that so I reached out to her. Um, how many calf tattoos do you have? Well, I have the Kabology tattoo so that's one. I have paws tattooed on my finger here and my new, my new tattoo here on my finger, it was originally supposed to be love but my sister pointed out that it really looks like calves. So if you want to look at it that way, technically I could have three cavalier tattoos. Do you have any useful dog apps? No, but that's a really good question. I would love to have useful dog apps. So if you know any useful dog apps, please let me know. Any tips for TikTok fame? Honestly, I'm still working on it. I don't know. 
I don't know what's the formula for TikTok. It seems like some videos do super well all of a sudden and some videos just have like a few hundred views. So I don't know what's the formula yet. I feel like it's just like Instagram. Sometimes it does well and sometimes not. What is your go-to doggy shampoo and bath products? Um, that's a really good question. I don't know the brand exactly, but I do love to use blueberry shampoos on their face because Milton has stinky eyes, so that really helps like get all the gunk out of their face. And plus it smells so good. Blueberry, it's usually like blueberry lavender or blueberry vanilla, something like that. Like it smells really nice, so I like to use that on their face. And for their body, I like something gentle with like oatmeal uh, for everyday use. And for something deep cleaning, I love the brand Poffically Pooches or Poffically Oh, Poffically Pampered Pooches or something like that. It's a brand from New Zealand. I did not bring that shampoo with me to LA, but I love that smell. It smells very floral, but like deep and woodsy tone. It smells really warm and comforting. I love that one. How often do you bathe the pups? Ask Kobe the calf. Back home, honestly, we bathe them like every four to six weeks and they never seem to get that dirty. But out here in LA, we literally bathe them like maybe three times a week and it's such a hassle, but it's so dirty out here. It's crazy. Pup named Aria. Hello, Aria. We love you so much and we miss you. Is your routine for Milton's stink face still the same? Yes, it's still the same. We just try to wipe it as often as we can, multiple times a day. Other than that, we use a blueberry facial on their face. Uh, the blueberry really helps with the smell, apparently, but truthfully, nothing really works because every few days, we, we're going to have to give her a blueberry facial. For the time that I had used it, a silver colloidal solution worked well if you applied it twice a day, every day. It really helped, but I didn't bring that product out from out to LA because I know that when we're out here, we bathe them all the time, so I just do the blueberry facial. This question comes back a lot, and for example, uh, Loli Tremblay and Tialfe Cavalier ask if we're gonna have a third Cavalier. And honestly, we think about it all the time. We really want a third Cavalier, and it would basically be goals, but the problem is traveling. I already feel a lot of anxiety and, not shame, but I feel very easily embarrassed and so traveling with two dogs already, I feel like there's too much eyes on me when we go to the airport and I don't like flying, I don't like airports and already we, we always come to the airport when we come to LA with like six luggages and two dogs and we already look like those crazy people, that's us, okay? So traveling with a third dog would be a bit too much for me, but I would love to. Okay, my camera ran out of memory space. But yeah, so I was saying, um, although now we do work from home and they're always with us, they there are some times when they're left alone um, and they just get used to it, honestly. Uh, we don't ever leave them for more than six hours. That's pretty much the maximum that we would leave them, but they do super well when they're alone. And especially when we travel, for example, and we leave them in hotel rooms, they're super used to it now and they just go straight to the bed and straight to sleep. They love it. This is not dog related, but what area of law did you specialize in? Um, so if you guys didn't know, before doing Herky the Cavalier and Kavalaji full time, I was a lawyer and I used to do business and commercial law. What activities do you like to do to keep the pups fit? Honestly, we try to take them on walks every single day and when it's nice outside and we're in LA, we do take them on hikes and to the beach multiple times a week. How did you train the girls to, to go to the bathroom and hold their bladder at night? Honestly, I always refer back to crate training. This is the method I find is the best for potty training the dog. I'll refer you to a potty train, a, a crate training video, but that's the best method I find because it, it's, it teaches them how to hold their pee and to, it teaches them where to go potty and when to go potty outside. Why does Herky's jowl always hook on her mouth? Honestly, I feel like she just has a lot of jowl. Like Milton doesn't have a lot of face skin, but Herky has so much face skin that every time she does anything, it happens a lot that her lip will be tucked into her mouth and I just think it's the most hilarious thing ever. Herky is so expressive, like she's so special, I love her. Who's more picky when it comes to food? They're both really not picky, but if one if, if it would have to be one of the two, it would be Milton. Milton doesn't like lettuce, for example, but pretty much everything else she likes. So yeah, Milton is the most picky out of the two. For a first pet in an apartment, is a Cavalier a good breed? Absolutely, they don't need a lot of space, so an apartment is great. They're not particularly loud either. They're not known to be barkers. 
So a cavalier for an apartment is great. Rosie the cavalier asks, how did you train them not to nibble on stuff? Honestly, it's completely normal for puppies to nibble and chew on things. So that's why a lot of different toys and textures are necessary when you have a puppy to teach them how to nibble on certain things and not to nibble on others. And eventually they really grow out of it. Hurricane and Milton have stuff. They just do this all day, honestly. Like, like it's probably age. The more your cavalier grows, the more chill they're going to become and the less they're going to chew on things. Pebbles the Cav asks, are Hurricane and Milton blood related? Yes, they are. They have the same dad. Although I, I really don't think they look alike in general. There are certain times where they really look alike. And Pumo 1961 says, stay safe and wash your paws. Absolutely, Herky knows how to wash her paws and we keep them clean and we keep ourselves clean as much as possible. So that's going to wrap up our Q&A for now. I think it's going to be a very long video, but I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want to see a Q&A specifically for Herky and Milton and have them answer the Q&A, let us know in the comments below and leave us some questions for Herky and Milton. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe to our channel, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future videos. We love you so much, and we'll see you soon. Bye!